The estimates are that about 50% of the people in the United States that have hepatitis D still don't know they have it. Screening is a big challenge right now in the United States. And those patients are out there slowly getting sicker and they don't even know it. It's too easy to get comfortable. It's too easy to say, we've done it, we can do it, you know, forget it, let's go on to the next medical problem. Hepatitis C is still a big problem. When we first discovered hepatitis C, and even when we were still calling it non-A, non-B, the only thing we could use was daily or standard interferon. And that led to clearing hepatitis in about 6% of people, 100% side effects. The patients were on treatment anywhere from 24 to 48 weeks. They were very sick. They were on weekly labs. They had nausea. They had vomiting. Now our all oral treatments are so safe and easy to use that we can really expand them to a lot of people where we would have never conceived treatment in the past. After the first month, the virus was not detectable. That was, you know, very encouraging. It's like, okay, this will, maybe this will work. And so then every month after that, it was the same. And then once I was finished in, in November, then I had to get a blood test in, a month later, and it was still undetectable. Hepatitis C is one of the few things where a clinician um, can have actually seen the discovery of a disease to conversations regarding eradication. And a lot of that has been because of the development of excellent, safe, finite therapy that's well tolerated and accepted by patients. I just had my three months blood draw and it's still undetectable. From what I understand is that yes, they say you're cured, but you still have to get another blood test a year from now and to make sure. I feel very positive that it's gone but I will still have a little, you know, holding my breath a little bit for, for the one year just to, to make sure. These are called direct acting antivirals or DAAs for short. And there's five different varieties of these drugs uh, that are used, four major ones that are used in clinical practice. And in combination, because any one drug, the virus is able to escape and develop resistance to one drug. So we combine two drugs typically, or three or four, to help suppress the virus so it can't escape, and the virus can't live without replicating. So if we can suppress the replication of the virus, we can cure the liver of hepatitis C. And the cure rate for many of these regimens approach, but don't necessarily hit 100%. Because the medications are easy to administer with minimal side effects. I think the goal is to try and get the primary care physicians to try and help us with, with treatment of those patients. There are programs where we're teaching and training primary care physicians to diagnose and treat hepatitis C with support, with backup from the hepatologist, from the liver specialist. But I think in the future, there's a role for early cases who don't have decompensated cirrhosis, who don't have liver cancer, who don't have kidney disease, where a primary care physician could treat those patients and monitor them because it's such an easy treatment now compared to the way it was um, even, even a few years ago. One of the, the big things that's underappreciated is uh, the importance of testing. Identifying patients that are currently not identified, especially those that run the risk of transmitting virus. They need to be able to identify who's at high risk, and we know that the baby boomers, anyone born between 1945 and 1965, every one of those people in the United States should have a one-time test for hepatitis C. Prevention, of course, is important. There have been pockets in the country where there have been large numbers of young people getting hepatitis C within the last few years that we really weren't seeing as much of in the last 10 to 20 years before that. It would be nice to clear hepatitis C as much as we can from people so that at least if they're using drugs, they're not actually transmitting it to other people. Hi, my name is Kelvin and I work on the team that creates the content that you've just seen, Medscape TV. If you like the content and want to see more, click on the button to the right and it'll take you to the full series.